Good morning folks, this is Steve Bradley from the God Loves People YouTube channel and welcome again to our study in Revelation. We'll be considering the book of Revelation chapter 11 once more and this is the assassination of the two witnesses part two. Copyright of course to me, Stephen C. Bradley as of 2016. The timeline is really pretty simple. The two witnesses preach for 1260 days. Revelation 11 tells us that, 42 months, three and a half years approximately. And their testimony begins with the opening of the seals in Revelation 6. It continues to the Antichrist invasion of Jerusalem in the middle of the seven year period that theologians call Daniel's 70th week or 70th seven. And also they call it the tribulation period. This tribulation period is seven years long. The first half comprises the two witnesses' testimony and many judgments, which we see going from Revelation 6 through 9. And the second half of this period is a time of terrible trouble. When Jesus was discussing this period, he called it the Great Tribulation, the time is called the days of vengeance, when all things written must be fulfilled. He said it was a time so bad that if it should not be shortened, no flesh, that's no human flesh, would be saved. It's the worst time in the world's history, past, present, or future. However, it is also the birth pangs of the new world and the new age, where God rules through his Son. So here's the timeline. Revelation chapters 1 through 4, John's present, and Revelation 5 is a scene of worship in heaven. Revelation 6 through 11 is the first half of this seven-year tribulation period. It includes the two witnesses, many judgments, and so on. Revelation chapter 13 through 19 is the final half of the seven-year period. The Antichrist rules with his power derived from the dragon until Jesus comes to destroy him and the dragon and all their followers. Next is the 1,000 year reign of Christ on earth in Revelation chapter 20. Satan is temporarily released also in Revelation 20. And then there is the final judgment of the dead in Revelation chapter 20 verses 11 through 15 and then finally eternity in Revelation chapters 21 through 22. You'll notice that I left out Revelation 12. That is because it's a panoramic chapter and we'll consider it when we get there. Now the two witnesses assassination is the pivot point of Revelation. The two witnesses are assassinated in conjunction with the Antichrist attack on Jerusalem. He has to do this to get into the temple to present himself as God. Now here are a couple of quotes uh, from the New American Standard Version. Matthew chapter 24 verse 15. Therefore when you see the abomination of desolation which was spoken of through Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, we'll let the reader understand. And that's actually a reference to some history and we can talk about that at another time if we have a moment to do so. Compare this with 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 3 and 4. Let no one in any way deceive you, for it, the day of the Lord, will not come unless the apostasy comes first, and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction or son of perdition, if you have the King James Version, who opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God or object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, and this is the most important point, displaying himself as God. This occurs when the Christians and Jews become Satan's obvious target, and they have to flee into the wilderness, and we'll see this in Revelation chapter 12. There's a graph that you can look at on the next slide, which kind of put the, puts this in graphic format. So here it is. 
And as you can see, this is a graph of Revelation chapter 11, 12, and 13. Uh, two witnesses from Revelation 6 through 11. And then Revelation 11, the two witnesses begin their ministry at the time of Revelation 6 and so on. The red dragon, Revelation 12 through 20. Now, the dragon actually exists in time past. And we see that for, from Revelation 12. And we'll, when we get there, we'll see this panoramic view of world history. So, kind of hold your horses for what, to, for what is revealed about the dragon. Revelation 12, he becomes very apparent. Revelation 20, he is bound in the bottomless pit, temporarily released from the bottomless pit, and finally destroyed uh, in the lake of fire. The Antichrist rules from Revelation chapter 13 through 19. And he is the beast rising from the sea. He begins in obscurity, becomes a leader of godless humanity, persecutes Christians and Jews. He is deposed and cast into the lake of fire with the false prophet in Revelation chapter 19, verse 20. And then at the bottom we have the blue arrow that discusses Revelation chapter 1 through 6, John's opening visions in 95 AD, and then the arrow goes all the way to the end uh, throughout the days of eternity. Now the two witnesses are assassinated in Revelation 11 because, as the people say, these two tormented all the earth dwellers. Of course, this is a classic case of blaming the messengers for the message. Think about that for a second. Someone tells you something you don't want to hear, what do you do? Well, the thing to do is kill him because he's delivering a message I don't want to hear. So the cancer doctor comes to you, sits you down and says, you have cancer and you pull out your gun and shoot him. That really isn't the thing to do. The thing to do is take his advice. However, after they are killed, the two witnesses arise after three and a half days and they ascend into heaven. Now that's scary stuff because apparently this is watched by every nation on earth. It's on CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, what have you, and probably YouTube. Although the party keeps going, in other words, the two witnesses rise into heaven and everybody decides that Christians and Jews are still bad people and let's kill them all, and the party keeps going and people, people do their thing, it kind of throws a wet blanket on the festivities because the two witnesses' assassination coincides with the following events. The Antichrist enters the Jewish temple and displays himself as God. Jerusalem is sacked. Christians and Jews alike run for their lives. Many flee Jerusalem, but not only from there, also from everywhere the dragon can reach, which is about everywhere. So if you're a Christian in those days, if you're a Jew in those days, your life is forfeit. It's a tragic and terrible time, but it's what is going to happen. Now, although everything looks so dark, these are still the death rattles of the old world and the beginning travails of the new. And we see that in Revelation chapter 11, verse 15, where the announcement is made that the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever. God is about to take his world back through his son, Jesus the Messiah. And that's 42 months and counting from the time he makes that announcement. So the question is, are you ready for this? This stuff is going to happen. And the thing about God is that he doesn't ask permission when he's going to do something. He just does it. So it is definitely happening. Ready or not, like it or not, time is running on this and time is running out. As I put in the presentation, Tick, tock, tick, tock, tick, tock. Each time that clock strikes, it's asking you the question, are you ready? 
And that's the most important thing about this passage. Are you ready?